Hi everyone, this is Saptashi here and I welcome you back to our course on Machine Learning using Python. So we are in the clustering segment in the, and in the last few classes we have seen few clustering algorithms like k-means, k-medoid, db-scan and finally agglomerative clustering. Today we are going to look at another clustering algorithm named as expectation maximization. So this is also popularly called as EM algorithm. We are going to look at some of the characteristics of this clustering algorithm. We will look at how this algorithm performs clustering with an illustration. We will look at how this can be formally represented in form of an algorithm. And then finally, we'll discuss some of the pros and cons of this algorithm and some of the recent researches about this algorithm. All right. Now, First of all, this is an algorithm which is called as a model-based algorithm. So any model-based algorithm actually assumes that there is a mathematical model which generates the data. Okay, And the mathematical model can be roughly equated with a probability distribution. So essentially, if I want to find, uh, the, find about how the data is getting generated, all I need to know is about this probability distribution and probability distribution can be known by knowing its parameter. Also, here is a twist that as there are multiple clusters, it is assumed that each of the clusters are primarily getting generated from 1-1 one, one probability distribution. So, if there are k clusters, there are k probability distributions. And that is the reason the overall data you think to be getting generated from a mixture of probability distribution. So that is the reason expected maximization or EM algorithm is also called as mixture model. The next characteristics is called as soft clustering. So in all other algorithms, what we have seen is that, you know, each observation belongs to one of the clusters, right? So this is called as hard clustering. However, when you are going for a soft clustering, one observation can belong to multiple clusters. Okay, And this belongingness is defined by something called as membership function. However, if I sum up the membership function values for a particular observation across different clusters, it will always sum to one. Okay, So these are some of the characteristics of EM algorithm. All right. Now, uh, we talked about parameters of a distribution. Okay. So let's, uh, you know, start understanding or go more deeper using a normal distribution. Okay. And a normal uh, distribution is represented by its mean and its variance. Okay. Uh, given by this N sign, right. So this is a normal distribution which follows uh, a mean of mu and a variance of sigma square. Uh, this can also be represented using a probability density function. Okay, And if you look at the probability density function, you will realize that this is nothing but a function of mu and sigma. So essentially, uh, it tells that if I know mu and sigma, I know the distribution. Okay, Or I can generate now data using this distribution. All right. Now, uh, let's look at some example normal distributions. So the simplest one is the blue one, which has a mean of zero. So you can see that the peak has happened at zero and standard deviation of one. Okay. Or variance, if uh, we can take a variance as one, uh, it's one and the same thing because one square is one. Okay. Uh, so this is your standard normal distribution. All right. If you look at next the amber or orange one, this is a mean of two. So you can see the peak happening at two and the standard deviation is three. So that's why the spread is much, much higher over here. The last one, the mean is zero. So the peak is at zero and the standard deviation is 0 0.2. So the spread is much, much lesser. Okay. So this is how if you just know this two, you can understand the distribution completely. All right. Now, uh, let us understand how data, what we mean by data coming from mixture of uh, normal distribution. Okay. So, maybe there are three normal distributions like this, the ones that are marked in blue, right? And when you apply a mixture of these three, 
So this is the shape of the car uh, that you get, right? So this is your actual data. So what we are essentially trying to do is that we are trying to find parameters of this individual blue distributions, okay? Which will give us idea about uh, the mixture model. All right. Now let's look at the illustration, okay? So let's say there are 10 points, right? Like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, so these are your 10 points and I am trying to find two clusters out of here, okay? So my first step will be arbitrarily select, uh, you know, uh, select two normal distributions by selecting the mean and the variance. So let's say I pick the first one uh, with a value 2 and the second one with a value 1. Okay, so these are my two means. Okay, now let's say I use a standard deviation of 1, then maybe my curves will look something like this, right? So now what I am, I will try to find out is that what is the, what is the likelihood of this point coming from this distribution or this point coming from this distribution. So you can of course understand that this point is more likely to come from this distribution. Again, this point is more likely to come from this distribution, okay? And this way, as I go further, the, the likelihood of this point coming from the latter distribution will be much more, okay? So let's take an example and see. So let's say, you know, these are my likelihood values, okay? And it, it sums to one. So the point one, the probability of coming from, or the likelihood of coming from the first distribution is 0 0.8, likelihood of coming from the second distribution is 0 0.2. And for all the cases, if you add up, it will be adding up to one. As an, as we have you know, moved farther to the right side, the, prob the likelihood of coming from the first distribution has quite dramatically reduced, quite drastically reduced, whereas, you know, uh, likelihood of coming from the first distribution has increased quite a bit. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the basic idea. Now, what I want to do is, I want to maximize this likelihood. Okay, I want to maximize this likelihood. So, how do I maximize the likelihood? For each individual ones, for each individual of the points, I take uh, the maximum of it. So for each row, I take the maximum and then I multiply them. Okay. So this actually gives me a likelihood function. So if you can understand that if for all of them, you know, the likelihood is one. So, you know, it is one and the other is zero, then, you know, uh, the likelihood will be maximized. Okay. So we are at that point and what we want to find out is that what value of this, right? What value of the mu and what value of the sigma square actually maximizes such likelihood, right? So it turns out that to do that, uh, what we need to do is we just need to calculate the mean from this likelihood. So I will, I will quickly explain this. Also, please note that this is called as the responsibility function also, okay? So basically it says that for this particular point, you know, uh, how much is this cluster responsible, okay? So this is also called as responsibility function. Now, uh, we have already this likelihoods calculated. The next question is, how do I calculate the new mu and sigma square, new parameters so that my likelihood value, uh, the one that I explained, is maximized, okay? So it turns out if I calculate uh, uh, like this, so if I multiply 0 0.8 by 1 and 0 0.2 by 1 and I, I do this multiplication and I take an average, but while taking an average, I instead of, you know, uh, dividing by number of points, if I divide by some of this membership, I get a new kind of mean okay so uh, now what happens is the mean was one for the first distribution and two for the second distribution so this step is telling if we shift our means to 3.61 and 6.196 the likelihood actually increases okay all right so 
this is given by this formula so a1 is your membership values and x1 is your actual data values okay so this is your next step however sigma square also needs to be determined okay so you cannot define the distribution only by mu so let's go to our next step so here what we do is with respect to the newly calculated mu we find the uh, sum of square okay so for each one of them right for for so it was 3 point something for the first one and 6 point something for the second one so we calculate for both both of them and we also multiply by the membership value okay so the sigma square actually is calculated like this so you find the square and then you multiply by this membership value so uh, this is this is coming as your variance right 9.22 for the first cluster and 7.44 for the second cluster now if i look at my new distribution my new distribution is centered so this one is centered around 3.2 and this is centered in maybe around 6.2 so these are my new uh, normal distributions and both of them has much more spread because the standard deviation also has increased so this process will be repeated okay this process will be repeated and every step will find look at the likelihood value okay so when my likely so you know my first step i had a likelihood value of l1 now again with this distribution i will calculate l2 similarly i will con continue calculating l3 so i will stop when there is a very small change from l2 to l3 or ln minus 1 to ln okay so let's now look at the formal algorithm so we initialize the parameters of the k distributions this will happen randomly okay so this will be completely random now uh, there is this e step so e step is evaluate the posterior so this is what we are calling as a likelihood or the responsibility function based on the parameters of step one okay so this we have already seen in the next step we estimate new parameters by maximum likelihood estimate so uh, don't worry about this maximum likelihood estimate this is a technique to estimate the parameters uh, using this mle only the formula that we saw for sigma square and mu are the are the calculations that we are going to do in the end step and then we continue you know as long as it doesn't converge okay now uh, these terms we have also read in context to Bayes theorem right so here what we are trying to find so this is the posterior probability that we are talking about that you know the different value of x is given right so x is a vector what is the probability of a class so this is called as posterior probability okay now this particular one probability of x given the class okay so probability of a data uh, given your 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 distribution is given the distribution parameters are given is called as your likelihood okay and this is called as your class prior probability so there is a very nice interpretation okay to compare probability and likelihood which is very easy to get confused about goes like this so let's say you want to find the probability of a particular value falling between this range okay so the probability is so the probability distribution is given to you you want to find the probability that the random variable falls between this range okay so this is given by this area all right whereas likelihood is the other way around okay so you are given the data okay now what what you are trying to find is that what is the likelihood this data is getting generated from this distribution and this is given by this line right so this perpendicular line is your likelihood okay so that is the basic difference all right so so far we have looked at a univariate normal distribution so you can understand that in your real life data there will be multiple vectors or multiple features so you will have to move to multivariate normal distribution and there the parameters are going to be the mean vector mu okay and the covariance matrix sigma right so let's understand this covariance matrix covariance matrix is a square matrix okay so if you have three variables this is how the covariance matrix will look like 
okay and individual elements are nothing but your covariances okay so how covariance is calculated covariance is a measure which tells you how a particular variable varies with the change in other variable okay <clears throat> so higher the value more associated these two variables are all right and this is a symmetric distribution as you can see so my <coughs> density function gets changed where you introduce mu which is a mean vector now because you have multiple distributions and then you have the sigma which is your uh, covariance matrix okay so this covariance matrix has a very interesting role to play this covariance matrix actually tell you how your distribution how what will be the shape of your distribution okay so it turns out that if you vary uh, without varying the mean if you just vary the co coefficient or covariance matrix you know the cluster shapes can change quite a lot okay so if there is not much correlation between these two vectors then they will give spherical clusters like we get in k-means all right however if there is good amount of correlation then they they will they can get compressed and you can get cluster shapes like this so basically you know uh, this if you can estimate this uh, parameter well you can come up with mixture models you know giving clusters which are of non spherical shape all right uh, so uh, more into this mathematical formula so you can think that the probability of a particular point is now uh, you know comes from two distributions so one distribution is defined by mu1 and sigma1 and another is from mu2 sigma2 so this is when k equal to 2 okay when there are only two clusters right uh, or two distributions in the mixture model right and you know uh, if you if you vary this pi 1 and pi 2 so pi 1 and pi 2 actually tells that you know what is the contribution of this distribution so this is called as mixing coefficient so what is the contribution of this distribution and what is the contribution of this di distribution so in a generalized form so this is also some of the thing that can be controlled okay so these are some of the research works so uh, basically this is happening for a high dimensional space uh, this is also quite a recent work okay so this is probably from 2019 and this is another work which was published in statistics and probability letters a journal from Elsevier so here uh, what they tried to do is they tried to work on so that EM algorithm converges faster okay now let's look at some of the pros and cons of this algorithm so we could see that they can find clusters of non-spherical shape in contrast to k-means okay actually this is a mixture model and the parameters come from different probability distribution okay so this is a characteristic however it is parametric right so we need to know the parameters of the probability distribution k-means doesn't assume any parameters of any distribution right so k-means is non-parametric and different initialization parameters may result in different optimal values so basically uh, you know mle maximum likelihood estimate finds the local maximum values right so this is also similar to k means and this is not only so the most uh, discussions you will see where the distributions the mixture is a gaussian distribution and you call it as a gaussian mixture model or gmm However, this can be also extended to other type of you know, distributions. We need to just know the type of the distribution. So this is one example where you know, genomic sequence was mapped to a multivariate poison log normal mixture. Okay? So essentially expected maximization is a model based algorithm, okay? is a soft clustering algorithm and it can, it has some advantages in comparison with k-means okay so i hope i could give you some idea about this popular algorithm and if you have any further question please feel free to put in our comment section do like and subscribe if the video is you know likable to you thank you so much for watching this